Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark. And today I'm your guest. I'm going to be interviewed by my friend and book developer, Christy Boyd Johnson. I always call her Chris. So I've got to formally give her the Christy here. <laughs> but new book coming out next week. And for a lot of you guys, this is going to be really helpful in building your author platform. But before we get started, a couple of things. I want to remind you to go over to authortrafficschool.com. Check out our courses. If you don't have a platform built, you don't have anybody to sell to. That's the bottom line. Can't be any more blunt. Um, don't screw it up. And then um, also, if you haven't already, go grab your subscription of Breakthrough Author Magazine. You can find that at BreakthroughAuthorMagazine.com. And Chris, you have a course coming up to promote as well. Tell us about it. Oh, I do. I have a su I actually two super, super fun workshop style courses. Uh, just real easy commitment. Uh, one for fiction, one for nonfiction. And for... For fiction, well, for both of them, they're different because they're different styles of writing, but essentially it's the foundational stuff that you need. If you don't have this in place, it's not really going to matter. You're just going to spin out on the writing of your book. So um, it's the nonfiction book workshop is on Saturday, August 5th, and it's from 8 to 12 noon central time. Totally a no-brainer at $47. The fiction one, same thing, except it's on Saturday, August 19th. And if, if you, whichever one you're writing, it's, um, we're going to make it super fun. And you're going to walk away with real, actual getting into your book during the workshop. <laughs> Not just a lot of blah, blah, blah in your face. We're going to dive in and we're going to do it. And, <laughs> and oh, oh, and uh, two, uh, you can go to uh, crushyourexpertbook.com and register right there. Okay, so. it sounds like you blanked out a little bit. It's crushyourexpertbook.com. I don't know why your sound is a little um, a little off there. It seems like you're fading oh. in and out a little. But you guys, uh, my, I'm already signed up for the fiction workshop. I haven't written a fiction novel in years. Poor Chris has heard about this book I want to write for like three years now, which I just, you wouldn't believe owning a publishing company and reading all day. I just haven't been that inspired to get something out. So um, go over to crushyourexpertbook.com and either sign up for the nonfiction or the fiction. My son is writing a fiction book as well. So we're going to get him signed up for the workshop. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. So today, Chris is going to interview me about my new book. It's called The Author Success Handbook, a step-by-step -step guide to building and leveraging your platform. So this is how you not only leverage it and build an audience, but really step-by-step, -step, uh, the whole flow and format of where to start and how to put it out there. And um, I'll just tell you for some of them, it is literally step-by-step. -step. I, I have screenshots. I tell you which funnels. So Chris, take it over and interview me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Juliet, I'm so happy to talk to you today about your new book. <laughs> <laughs> your forthcoming book okay you know I have to say because I work with you so extensively being you're being one of the leading publishers in the in the country author platform building I think is the biggest obstacle that authors seem to have because they have that write it and they will come mentality is that what you see most of the time I see that so much, um, especially in uh, the last couple of years with the quote expert field, we find that people start businesses, especially since COVID, they've transitioned from this physical space to now my business is going to be online. And they haven't really understood that in order to sell online, you need to have a digital platform. It's not just to put it up and somebody will find it. So um, what this really does is if you're a business owner and you're writing that book to be able to increase your business, then you have to have that platform in place. So you have someone to sell your book as a nurture tool and then products, programs, and services that you can move them onto. 
So yes, it is very important. And it is one of the biggest obstacles. Um, when when you get out there, uh, you're going to find that um, people just aren't going to find your book. <laughs> I, that, I know we've talked a lot about the problem that authors have of waiting till after they write their book. Can you talk about when's the best time to for people to start building their author platform or a more optimal time? <laughs> At least a year in advance. Uh, we have a book coming out actually this week. We're recording this at the end of the May. It's coming out next week. Um, and he started with us six months ago. And I bet if you ask him today, everything is built, but I don't think he feels like he's had time to really learn how to use those tools we've created and and really reach out and build those audiences. So um, I would say a year in advance. And, and here's why. The learning curve, you are basically learning digital marketing. So you have to have like your you have to have your audience nailed, your zone of genius nailed because you can't do digital marketing by yourself when you first start. The learning curve is steep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to give yourself time to build step by step all of those tools and then be able to implement tools. And here's the one thing that people don't understand. And I had this happen as far back as 2013, 14, believe it or not is uh, I was getting a lot of business from a, a writing coach in town who also published, but people weren't publishing with him and I'm not sure why, but he was encouraging them to build a landing page and a list. So they would build it, but then the people didn't know how to use it. Most of them weren't on social media or they, so you really have to learn not only you can build something and it just sits there unless you utilize it. So you have to learn how to build it you have to learn how to utilize it, but you have to also know enough about the building process to go back and make some tweaks because anybody who's done digital marketing knows it never works smoothly the first time. You have to go back and get some kinks out. Maybe a little bit of languaging is wrong. Maybe the funnel's not working, connecting the way that you'd like to see it. So there really is a lot to build there. But here's here's the high spot of all of this. Um, whatever you learn how to build for that book, you're going to be able to use for your business as well, because now you've got a thorough understanding, which means you can drive more to your other bigger ticket products and services. Mm -hmm, definitely. And the book actually becomes one of the better forms of a nurture tool, right? Because audiences love to get to know you through a book. Yeah, so, um, and you were in the business back then. You remember, like, 2013, 14, 15, 16. Um, people, digital marketing was so new that people would click and buy something that's $2,000. Like, it was, it was a no-brainer. But then they started to realize that whoever they were buying from wasn't delivering the way they promised. There were so many problems that people started shying away from buying those big ticket items without a relationship. So if you consider your book a relationship builder and a nurture tool, you're going to go much further in this process because to spend, you know, books are getting expensive, the cost of paper, I just went through this, I, I sent the royalty agreement out to um, a, a client who's about to publish, um, the price of paper has gone up, the wholesale, that means the wholesale price of books have gone up, the distributors take more now, which means decreased royalties for all of the authors. So if you can consider that 20 to 30 or maybe even $40 book as a nurture tool, it's a way of uh, your audience or someone who may not be in your audience now, have a book recommended, read it, get to know you, see how you work, or is your personality going to resonate, and then be able to follow more of your content into that space where now I feel comfortable buying something that is 2,500, 3,500, you know, 10,000. So um, it really is what I would consider a, a nurture tool and a relationship building tool. Oh, that is the key right there. Building relationships that I think you just hit the nail on the head because the days of 
you know, build a website and they'll click in and they'll click through. It's, they're over, folks. It is over. People want to know you. And there's a valid reason for that. They, they need to know that they're working with someone legitimate. <laughs> so relationship building, you go into that, I think, pretty well in your book. The importance of relationship building and uh, how, how would you say that people, when they start to work with you, are they even aware that they need to build relationships? Uh, oh, that's such a great question. If they have seen me out talking someplace, if they choose me because, and, and we have a lot, we get a lot of clients from LinkedIn. Most of the time they don't realize it, but when I mention it on the call, they'll go, oh yeah, I did kind of feel like I knew you because of all the content I saw and all the value you provided. But then we have, we have a lot of people who come to us via referral and that is usually because I built a relationship with the book developer who has built a relationship with this person already. So when I begin to point that out, they realize it, but rarely do they come into it saying, oh, I have a relationship with you. So, you know, that's that's why I chose you. So, yeah, you do have to keep in the back of your mind that you're relationship building. Yes. You know, I, I think it would be good because I don't think we address this enough in the world, but the legitimate publishing, the world has changed so much, you know, back in the nineties or aught, the aughts, the two thousands, it was, the internet was just on the rise and people discovered self publishing and it was kind of a do it yourself kind of thing. But now can, what are some of the warning signs you, when you're looking for a publisher, there's a couple of really significant red flags to look out for that you're dealing with someone who's not above board. Oh, can you help us with that? <laughs> you know, one of them is about the, oh, the ISBN number. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yes and no. So um, ISBN numbers, your publisher should be buying them. So they, you know, like we buy a block, but there are other red flags. So uh, when you interview someone, ask about the level of service, because uh, most of them, if you just hand off your manuscript, you're going to get, you know, you're not going to get much. They'll just hand it back. They'll charge you for corrections. I mean, we actually, the day you sign the contract, we start meeting weekly to keep you on track with your project. But other red flags too. One of the biggest is, are they keeping your rights? There's, there's no way that you should pay someone to publish your book and then find out that they own the rights. Also, um, one of the things that kind of bugged me, I'm going to be really transparent about, is uh, I had a client two years ago who was my age and she kept coming back. She's a, an attorney and saying, you know, what happens if you die? Which I was immediately like, whoa, <laughs> don't don't give me the evil eye and, and kill me. But, you know, she had a really good point. You know, how do I continue? Is there a contingency plan? Who will pay my royalties. Um, another thing too, that I consider, and I'm probably way out of bounds in the industry on this, but we don't take any of the back end profits, meaning we don't take any of your royalties. If you're paying someone to produce your book and to distribute your book, um, they should not be taking a piece of your royalties. This is not like a traditional contract where um, I said, hey, Chris, I love your book. We're going to format it. We're going to cover design. We're going to promote it. We're going to do everything on our dime. And then you're going to give us a piece of those royalties. That for a traditional publishing company, perfectly, you know, inside the boundaries. I feel, and this was one of my pet peeves when I started this company, was seeing everybody else take it. And I consider it like this. If you go to Office Depot, and you go over to the graphics counter and you say, hey, will you design me a business card? And they say, yes, the design will be $75. Um, and you say, yay, that's great. And then they present you with the design and you say, oh, yes, I really like it. Can you please print me 100 cards? So then they hand you your box after you've paid for the graphic design and you've paid for the 100 cards to be printed. And they say, oh, by the way, we get 50% of anything you sell using these business cards. Y you would be appalled. But yeah. that's basically what most self-publishers do. Mm -hmm. And that, that actually, I, in my mind, that ties directly into 
authors educating themselves about building their platform because the platform is everything. It's so that we as authors own our own audiences. Yes. We're, and we have to know how to do that, how to engage them and where, where we do this and how we do this and how we set it up so that we're not at the mercy of people, the scammers out there, because they are out there. This is <laughs> in every, in every area, in every field. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there kind of a way to ease into building a platform without, because I know that for someone who's writing a book, they tend to be very absorbed into the writing of the book, which that's, that's more my area, the book development, the actual development of the book, but for, they also need to be doing the platform building at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what would be like a, like first steps, like small, something small and actionable they could do right away that would help them get started and start building that confidence. And well, we, we start the whole process and this is in the book as well. I, I believe there's a link to the program with a program called build your author avatar.com. you can find it over there. It's, I think it's $97, but we actually go through those steps in the book and it's really identifying your niche audience because you can't write a book for everyone. I had someone who signed with us in March and I did two things. I gave them the Build Your Author Avatar program and I had Why They Buy, the book by Cherie Tree. And I gave him both of those and he wanted to be published in June. And he came back to me and he said, based on these, I need to go back to my book developer. We wrote this book for everyone. We did not niche it down the way it really needed to be. And so that's where I would start. And what is unique about this program and, and the deep dive into your ideal client is number one, you, you can build that, the psychographics and the demographics. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step and really getting into what are the fields that would follow? What are the educational levels that would follow? What is that age group? Where do these people like to hang out? But I think even the deeper part of the program that helps you long term is that, first of all, the dive into media. What sort of media are you consuming? Um, we've had almost every single client, and I'm going to use Kevin Jones as an example of this because I'm so proud of him. <laughs> um, Kevin was an NPR listener. So naturally, he's LGBTQ. And he, you know, he thought his audience was just that particular realm in that realm. So we had him go over and look at what, what I would consider NPR sort of left leaning media. We had him go over to right leaning media. And so now he got to see the other side of that and sort of map out where is my, where can I get my foot in the door? Because if you don't go across the different media spectrums, you're going to pigeonhole yourself into uh, places that may be harder to get into. And, um, you know, by opening up that door to the other side of media, you've now expanded who you can speak to. Here's why I say that. Um, the beautiful late Leslie Michaels, when we went into the book and she started working with our media expert, um, she wanted, she thought her book that was on women was more aimed towards that left-leaning audience. So she had Jackie trying to get her on MSNBC and CNN and, you know, all of those NPR, those left-leaning outlets. What we found was there was so much competition in speaking on those topics in those left-leaning outlets that it was very hard to get Leslie in the door. I mean, there was one that we pitched that she was up against a huge writer at, at the uh, New York Times. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're going to take this very well-known name. What was really curious was how many inquiries we were getting in the book from right-leaning media. Because they wanted to know, like, what's your spin on this? How do you feel about this? What's your topic? And um, so we were getting NTD, uh, Newsmax. Um, I don't know if we ever got an inquiry from Fox, but um, we were getting more that right -like leaning media that really was interested in what she had to say about empowering women and, and different things like that. So it's very important. The other thing that's a part of that program is going out and looking at your competition. 
Most book developers don't have you do that. So you can't see, you're not seeing the languaging that those other people are using to be enticing. Um, you're not seeing what those influencers are selling because remember, you want to take that book, that nurture tool and incorporate it into what you're selling next where you will make your money. Nobody ever makes a lot of money from books or very few people. So it's very important to really get a deep dive and know from day one, what are my hashtags? What are my keywords? Where am I going with this? So um, I probably, that's too long winded. I always get mad when people talk this much on my podcast, but <laughs> So those are some of the benefits. That's where we start. Then we move into why they buy, because you want to understand where your audience is, why they buy, what sort of language you use, what do they like, what do they not like, instead of writing that book to everybody. And then moving into, you know, your zone of genius, because you're not going to do everything in the end. And then diving into building the assets that we're going to build, LinkedIn, social media, um, uh, content. What are you going to do for your content? What is your social media going to be? Where? What are your funnels going to look like? Do you know how to build a funnel? Do you know which kind of funnel you need? Because there are five main funnels that every author should be looking at um, as far as their book and their business. So it really does lead step by step, chapter by chapter into that. Absolutely. I, I've been through your book a couple of times because I got the privilege of editing it, which <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I, I, every time I go through it, I'm like, oh, wow, this is this little tidbit, because that's kind of a thing, you know, every time you read something, you get something new out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's just, it's just jam packed with information. And, and it's not overwhelming, because it is step by step. So you don't go on to the next thing until you've, you know, so you can go at your own pace and, and figure it out. And so don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, not at all. So I suggest two main content distribution points uh, for expert books in there. One is LinkedIn. So I believe we cover how to set up a LinkedIn newsletter. And then also um, video, how to set up your own YouTube channel. Um, and that, that again, is step by step. We just had one of our clients, Tracy, uh, go through that uh, process. Uh, Kevin did too, because you're going to want to be able to feed them content and most everyone's using video. So um, we actually have Kevin on YouTube and we are leaning towards Rumble as well. I don't have directions for Rumble, but it's something you should look into and think about because YouTube um, is a little more left leaning, Rumble, a little more right leaning, and it doesn't help you. It doesn't discount you to be on both. Because you have to be really careful what you say on YouTube. If you say the wrong thing, they will delete you or they mm -hmm. will make it so people can't see. Rumble is a free speech. So anybody can find, they're, they're not going to delete you over there. Right, right. And those are things that, mo that we don't really think about. I mean, I, I've i written, I can't even tell you, I think some stupid number of books both ghostwriting and editing in my own books and it's over 40 or 50 or something like that. And uh, you just don't think about that when you're writing, but you have to, you have to, you have to, in this day and age, you have to think, where's my, where's my, where are my people? Who am I writing for? How do I reach them? And how do I bring them in? So your book does that very, very well. And so kudos, Julia. <laughs> You always tell me how much you, uh, that it's hard for you to write. So I'm proud of you for doing it. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who, who don't know me, I am, I'm really good at organization. I'm really good at systems and processes. I'm good with people and I'm a good storyteller, but I'm not a great writer. And it's all, it has been, Chris has edited a lot of my books. It has been very much a challenge to keep my sarcastic voice. And Which is really good when you do fiction, though. <laughs> I know, when, I do, when I do fiction, my, my fiction books are actually kind of funny um, because I, I, I make fun of societal things that I see out there, which is probably why I haven't written a, a, a fiction novel in, oh gosh, like almost 15 years now because society just went wacky on me. Um, but it's hard to keep, it's hard to keep my voice 
because, and, but that's really an important part of writing the book is making sure that it's your voice because that's how people see if they resonate with you. I have such a hard time working with someone with no sense of humor because it's like, you know what, life, life is funny to me. I'm very much a, a droll optimist. <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I make fun of a lot of things. <laughs> well, I love working with hu- with people who have a sense of humor. It's so much more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. It is. And, and, you know, I bring a different spin to the table. I would say I, I very much think outside the box. And um, to give an example of that, it's kind of funny when I was growing up. My dad uh, was very good with his hands. He could take anything apart. He could put it back together. He would, did ward work. Um, I've actually got a potting bench downstairs that that he uh, built for me before he passed away. But it was always funny as a child because my dad would look at me and the way I did things and he'd say, you know what? You don't have any common sense. Which I, I'm sure, well, I, I mean, parents parents say these things. They don't, I don't think back in the 60s, we realized the impact of what we were saying. <laughs> um, so I kind of bounced along thinking I didn't have any common sense. And then I got into, you know, as in corporate America, I got into those big meetings and my ideas would come out and people would go, God, why didn't I think of that? And, you know, then we would work backwards, like retrofitting it into what we needed. Um, And that was really the point where I realized that um, common sense has different meanings. So if you're someone like my dad who worked with my hand with his hands, he would look from visually and say, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Mm. But I, I found that I have more common sense in my head. It's getting that idea out of my head and onto a board. Because let me tell you, I can't put anything together, or take it apart. Like that gene just didn't happen. <laughs> well, yeah, that's very kinesthetic. You're you're very visual. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, Juliet, it's your book. I, I can't wait. When's it coming out? Okay, so my book is out next Tuesday. It's called The Author Success Handbook, a step-by-step guide to building and leveraging your platform. You'll be able to find it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple. It'll be, it's pretty much everywhere. So I encourage you to go buy it. And, you know, if you, if you want, after you read it, go check out Author Traffic School. If you need some help, we have lots of products and services there. And if you noticed, I just told you to go see my nurture tool. And then if you needed more help, go over to the place where I'll really make more money on that project. No greed intended, but I want to, I want to be able to practice what I preach here. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and well, in the education world, my former life, we call that modeling. There you go. Our students, what we want so that they, they can see what we want from them. So yes, there you go. I, I think we call it in alignment when you're a teacher as well. So practicing what you preach. <laughs> why I wrote a book on it because I have a platform built, but I didn't with my first book. Right. And that's what we're trying to do is help people avoid that. That, that becomes a problem over time because you just sit there going, why isn't anyone seeing my book? And we don't want that. We want them to find you and start building a relationship so that you can build your business. Yes, exactly. In fact, my first book, I think I sold about 135 copies. And when I cleaned out my grandmother's house after she passed away, I think she bought them all. (laughs) I had a lot of books I had to figure out what to do with. (laughs) Well, that would be something we would like to avoid as well. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We're a garage full of our own books. (laughs) Exactly. So... Well, thank you for interviewing me, Chris. I love your background. If you guys, I know you're probably listening on podcasts. Chris has this brand new background. I'm very envious. Um, I don't use the background because my hair and my fingers and all that disappear because I don't like a green board in here either. So thank you very much. Uh, Again, you can go buy the book, uh, Author Success Handbook and uh, Juliet Dylan Clark, and it'll be available on July 25th. Woohoo! Congratulations again, Juliet. Thank you.